What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another weekly update. So there's lots of exciting news to go over here this week. Lots of reveals this week as well. But the first thing is Chevy has revealed the 2023 Corvette Z06. And it sounds amazing, both with its specs and with its actual sound. Unfortunately, I don't have any sound clips to share with you uh, from the uh, Chevy press site. They didn't have any actual sound clips, but I will link the YouTube video above, which is the reveal video, which will give you some sound clips there. It does sound amazing, but the star of the show here for this new car is this new 5.5 liter naturally aspirated flat plane crank LT6 V8 engine that revs to 8,600 RPMs, makes a crazy 670 horsepower, which is the most horsepower ever for a production naturally aspirated V8 engine, which is kind of mind blowing. I mean, you know, it's even more power than what you got with the previous Z06, which was a supercharged V8 engine. So very, very impressive. And it's designed to be a screen or two with torque actually coming in 10 pound feet less than the regular Corvette at 460 pound feet. But again, 670 horsepower should definitely make up for it, having you know more power than the old Z06, which honestly I was expecting less power than the old Z06 when I heard about this engine going nationally aspirated again. So to have more, I think is a huge surprise and really nice. It isn't gonna be slow either, even though it doesn't have an enormous amount of torque. Zero to 60 for this thing, they say is 2.6 seconds. 2.6, I mean, that basically, you know, just puts you right up there with all the Teslas and stuff. But aside from that, I mean, this thing's gonna smoke basically all supercars out there, uh, you know, under a million dollars. So, I mean, very, very impressive as far as that goes as well. Um, I don't know how, honestly, they're managing to get that much of a low zero to 60 time. But anyway, uh, anyone that's worried about this engine's durability as well should, shouldn't worry too much because um, they say it's the same motor basically used in the C8R race car that they've been racing since 2019 and they've learned a lot about the engine over those you know, past couple of years here and uh, you know designed the z06 here to you know have that durability and that reliability as well um, it's also hooked up to an upgraded version of the regular stingrays eight-speed dual clutch transmission but the z06 thankfully has a shorter 5.56 final drive ratio that should make um, these uh, higher rpms in this car you know a little more accessible without having to, you know, triple the speed limit or anything. I think, you know, the teaser showed that uh, third gear tops out at 100 miles per hour. So you still are doing 100 miles an hour in the top of third, but, you know, at least second gear, you know, hopefully red line's a little bit lower than it did in something like a Shelby GT350, which I think second gear took you to like 80 something miles an hour. Um, so, you know, maybe a little bit better here, although I'd like to see even shorter gearing yet, but still an awesome step there. Uh, the car also handles amazingly well too, building upon the great, you know, mid-engine platform, of course, of the new C8s. Uh, so, but for the Z06 here, it's 3.6 inches wider to fit 275 wide front tires with massive 345s in the rear. And uh, you can see the uh, sculpted bodywork, which kind of bulges out a little bit more, especially in the front there, but also in the rear to accommodate those tires. And so that's a, it, unique little look. You also see unique uh, looks there for the front bumper and the rear to help with cooling and all that stuff as well. Also, all versions of the Z06 here come with upgraded suspension components, an enhanced version of the magnetic ride control 4.0, and bigger six piston Brembo brakes. You can also get a carbon fiber aero pack that adds a bigger front lip, uh, as well as dive planes and um, swaps the subtle rear lip for a big rear wing. And if you want even more crazy, there's also a Z07 package that swaps Swaps the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires for Cup 2 tires, uh, along with giving you even more suspension upgrades and an even bigger carbon ceramic Brembo brakes. Uh, so you have carbon ceramics there on the Z07s, which is going to be awesome. If it's anything like the carbon ceramics on the CT5V Blackwing that I uh, raced around the VIR, it's going to be very, very impressive braking here on the smaller, lighter Z06. So anyway, uh, lastly, you can also add on carbon fiber wheels to this package for a 41 pound reduction in unsprung mass. And so with this setup, they're claiming they'll be able to pull 1.22 Gs on a 300 foot skid pad. So I mean, this thing is gonna be really, really impressive. Hopefully the front end grip is also something that's fixed since that's you know something that people thought could be improved on the Corvettes. But I thought the regular Corvette also handled really well around the track when I went on the launch. So I'm very excited to try out the Z06 here eventually. There's also a bunch of other details I could go into here, uh, but I'll save most of this for the review and just cover the main highlights here because I could go on for 20 minutes about all the stuff in this thing. Um, my only complaint with it personally, if I'm going to interject my 
my own opinion here a little bit, is that I wish they would have done more to the back end because the front end, I really like that new front bumper. I think it looks really cool. But in the back, it looks like, aside from the different exhaust tip arrangement with you know the center mounted exhaust versus having them on the corners on the regular Corvette, aside from that, you can't really tell it's a Z06. And I know that you know they haven't had crazy rear bumpers in past Z06s either, but I just would have liked to see something because I feel like the back end just still needs a little bit more excitement to me. But that's my only complaint, and that's truly a nitpick because, you know, with this thing being as awesome as it is, I will forgive any shortcomings. All you have to tell me is 8,600 RPM redline, and basically everything else I care about goes out the window, in my opinion. This is going to be an amazing, amazing car. So very excited to hopefully drive one someday. Um, they're going to be starting uh, production next summer, and pricing hasn't been revealed for these yet. But whatever they charge for it, i got to say that I think it's going to be worth whatever they charge. Because, you know, you're basically getting the car that Ferrari should be building right now for about the th a third of the cost of what Ferrari is building right now, which in my opinion is way less desirable than this. You know, those Ferrari V8s were amazing back with like the 458 Spider I reviewed, you know, a couple of months ago. But now the Ferraris just have the turbos. They don't sound as crazy awesome as they used to. This is um, gonna be very, very impressive. So honestly, even if they charge Ferrari money, I could justify it, I think. But the fact that it'll probably be, you know, a third of a Ferrari's cost, absolute Grand Slam home run. Um, I absolutely love this thing. And um, I wish I had the money to order one because honestly, this is the first Corvette I've ever actually wanted. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's going to be a special car that goes down in history. Because again, you know, think about the times we're in right now with everything going electric. This is, uh, you know, really a kind of a final hurrah, I think, for an awesome, you know, gas engine that will go down in history that's new and you know, we haven't seen before. So very exciting. And uh, one last little thing I do want to mention as well is that all that B-roll that you were seeing of driving around was in Pittsburgh. It was filmed right in my backyard, about 20 minutes away, basically. Um, and so it's really cool. I wish I would have gotten wind of it. I would have loved to see it in person. But um, they even had some tunnel shots there of our awesome tunnels here in Pittsburgh, but there was no audio to go along with it. So I promise that once I get one of these as a press car, fingers crossed if they do send me one, um, I will take it through those tunnels for you and you can hear how glorious that exhaust will most likely sound in those tunnels here in Pittsburgh. But yeah, so that's about it as far as all the uh, details here on the Z06. Very, very impressive. I'm, you know, looking forward to, you know, trying it out hopefully and, you know, talking about it more in the future. But wow, I just have to say bravo Chevy. This is a fantastic car. Exceeded all my expectations on paper, at least so far. Very, very impressive. But another really big new debut this week is Mercedes AMG has revealed the new generation of the SL. And so, in addition to being an entirely new generation, uh, it also only comes as an AMG model now. And either uh, there's an SL55 or an SL63 trim. They both run the 4 liter twin turbo V8 engine. The, and in the uh, 55 version, it does 469 horsepower and 560. 16 pound feet of torque, and the 63 version does 577 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque. And so, 0 to 60 is 3.8 seconds for the uh, slower one, and then uh, 3.5 seconds for the 63 there. And like other Mercedes models, it uh, uses a nine speed automatic transmission to put the power to the ground. Other big changes, though, speaking of putting power to the ground, is that it's all wheel drive only now, and it also is going to be coming with a soft top instead of a retracting hard top like it used to. Also, despite the fact that there is now a bad Back seat again here in the SL. AMG says that they want this to be more of a sports car and less of a grand tourer. So it's set up to be, you know, definitely on the sportier side. Um, and so they're all going to be coming standard with rear wheel steering. And uh, the 63 version takes it one step further, of course, with a limited slip diff in the back. It's kind of crazy you don't get a limited slip diff in the 55 version because it's still a very expensive high end Mercedes sports car and it doesn't have a limited slip diff. That's kind of surprising. But anyway, limited slip diff in the 63 along with an active ride control suspension and a few other enhancements of course with those um, and then from a luxury standpoint it's you know pretty nice inside it has all of Mercedes newest uh, screen technology top-notch materials it looks like and uh, you know there's also some of the nice Mercedes features like a neck warmer uh, which will be handy on cold days and so anyway they're gonna be arriving in the first half of next year but we don't have any pricing yet for those 
And we have some fresh news about the Mustang, the next generation Mustang here, finally. And this is actually some more concrete news and not just rumors, it seems, this time around. So, um, like a few of the other Mustang leaks that we've had as far as news in the past, um, this info was actually spotted on LinkedIn uh, by Mustang 7G user AMK91. And so it reveals someone who's an employee that's on their resume basically saying that they worked on the 2023 model year Mustang that had hybrid setups for both the four-cylinder and the V8 versions. Um, which is interesting because uh, the past rumors I just covered a few weeks ago were suggesting that we could get carryover powertrains. Now there's a chance that both of those uh, rumors could uh, line up, you know, with this new information here. Um, and so we'll have to see. But as far as the hybrid component goes, first, um, it could use the same setup as the F-150 Power Boost, which is a transmission-based hybrid setup, and um, so that would make it pretty easy to add in the hybrid thing there. It's, you know, so it should you know work totally fine. Um, but that would mean that it would be automatic only. Now hopefully that would be an optional powertrain and it wouldn't be auto only for all Mustangs here for this new generation. I don't think they would do that since the manual take rate is so high. So don't get out your pitchforks just yet. Um, so we'll see about all that. But another possibility is a system that Ford patented a while back, which was also actually pointed out on Mustang 7G by user Twin Turbo. Um, and so this was patented a couple years back and it shows a V8 actually, coincidentally enough, um, with a setup for an electric assist on the front wheels, which would mean all wheel drive. And we've been hearing rumors of an all wheel drive Mustang in the past as well, maybe because of this patent or maybe just from other things that we've heard. I'm not sure, but um, you know, so that's kind of an interesting little uh, wrinkle there as well that, you know, so who knows what they're going to do with the Mustang. I think, you know, the, the thing that I'm potentially seeing here is that maybe what they will do is either they have hybrid versions of the Mustang that are going to be automatic only, and then you'll have carryover powertrains for those who want the manual or don't want the hybrid stuff. So, you know, that would make it a little more complicated from a production standpoint because you have extra variants and stuff. But it could be that, you know, hey, if you want the extra however many horsepower of the hybrid, here you go, and you got to go for the automatic, and, you know, it's obviously going to be more expensive. And those who want a simple V8 or four-cylinder Mustang, can you know go for you know one of the manual transmission ones and do that or it could also be that you know it's they bundle all together so the hybrid thing and the all-wheel drive thing and um, all that is all bundled into one thing it's automatic only but you get the all-wheel drive and the hybrid thing and uh, you know it's something you can get on both the four cylinder and the v8 that would be pr kind of interesting and then again you have those carryover powertrains like they were rumored to do and have that for those who still want a simple normal mustang with all of that other stuff We'll see. Hopefully, you know, if this is actually a recent LinkedIn posting and it's still saying model year 2023, then that means we got to get some kind of info about the new Mustang at some point here in the next six months or so. Um, you know, usually it would be sometime this fall. We'd start, you know, hearing stuff and seeing stuff. We haven't seen any kind of camouflage prototypes yet or anything. So, um, yeah, it's kind of surprising. They're being so secretive with the new Mustang officially, uh, but hopefully we do get a little bit more info here soon, but uh, very interesting to at least see that. Um, for a few other couple uh, future car speculation stories here real quick, they're actually thanks to some spy shots that were sent in by two subscribers this week. So first off, we have local car enthusiast Sally um, that spied um, Acura testing a refreshed TLX on some back roads that are actually just a few minutes away from where I film my my car reviews as well. So first Chevy's hanging out in Pittsburgh and now Acura is and no one sends me an invite. <laughs> but it's uh, it's kind of cool that they're testing these right there on the same roads that I test them on. So um, kind of an interesting uh, little touch there. But anyway, so as far as what we're seeing here, um, I'm guessing this is a refresh for the TLX because you can see it's got heavy camo on the front. The back end just has a wrap. So, you know, I'm guessing, you know, just slight little changes there to the rear bumper. Um, you know, and I think I think most likely this will end up being like what you see with the RDX, how that just got a little bit of a refresh, a little bit of a smoothed out nose to kind of uh, give it closer styling to the MDX. I could see something like that, you know, a revised grill and stuff coming for the TLX, and that's probably what they're testing here. Um, but very cool to see that, and I'll have to keep my eye out to see if uh, they're hanging out anymore here this week as well. But anyway, thanks to Sally for sending those in. 
Also, subscriber running wild with Milwaukee Buck actually spotted what appears to be a Genesis G80, I think, running on the highway here with camo on it, but it's kind of hard. There's just two quick little clips there. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell much about it, except that it has unique wheels and those wheels look familiar, but I can't place them. They're not the G80 Sport wheels and they're not the wheels on the electric G80. So I'm ruling out those two as far as what this is. This could be a higher performing version or it just could be an oddball G80 that's running different wheels. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very curious to see what they end up doing with the new version of the G80. I figured we were done with new versions of the G80 with just the electric one we knew was coming and the G80 Sport, which they just announced, you know, a little while back. So I'm not sure uh, what they're doing with that, but also very interesting to see. And let me know in the comments below what you think that might be. But huge thanks once again to him for sending those in. Uh, getting back to some official reveals here this week, though, the 2022 Range Rover was just revealed. And so the leaks last week were accurate with it getting more futuristic styling here and more narrow taillights in the back being the two biggest changes there, along with some inspiration from the Velar on the sides with its very you know streamlined kind of look, which I think looks really cool. And uh, it's available in two different wheelbases with the longer one having an option um, for what well, gives you eight extra inches of length and that's to give you the option of a third row seat if you'd like. You don't have to get the third row seat so if you just want extra cargo space you can have that as well but uh, very cool they're offering a third row in the Range Rover for the first time. Other interior features here are a new 13.1 uh, inch curved Pivi Pro infotainment system, a 13.7 inch digital gauge cluster which I think is actually one of the biggest digital gauge clusters out there currently as well as an available third 35 speaker Meridian stereo. 35 speakers. Sounds pretty crazy, and I'm sure it actually does actually sound crazy too. <laughs> um, and also, you can get power assisted doors now, as well as even a little bench there for the rear hatch, just like Rolls Royce offers on the Cullen N, which is a funny little touch. Um, another cool feature, though, is that it now has rear wheel steering. So uh, they say this actually gives it the smallest turning radius in the entire Land Rover lineup. So, certainly will make it easier to park and uh, maneuver in tight spaces. So, that's great. Mechanically, it'll offer two engines at launch. The first is the regular P400 3 liter inline six that does three. 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque and then you can step up to the p530 model which gives you the 4.4 liter twin turbo v8 from bmw and that one does 523 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque and that would also do a 4.4 seconds 0 to 60 so pretty impressive performance for a range rover and in 2023 they said that they'll be uh, doing a plug-in hybrid version as well and that'll pair up that six-cylinder engine with a roughly 140 horsepower electric motor and a 38 kilowatt hour battery pack for 434 horsepower total and up to 62 miles of electric range, they say. That's 62 miles. I don't know if that's the WLTP generous testing or if that's actual EPA. That sounds kind of high, so I would assume it'll come in under 50 once they do the EPA testing here. But still, uh, you know, a decent amount of electric range here, so that's great. There's also going to be a fully electric version, they say, coming in 2024, but we haven't seen that one yet. But anyway, as far as these gas ones, they're available to order now, and pricing starts at $105,350. So cool to see that. Rolls-Royce also has revealed the black badge version of the new Ghost this week. And so, uh, before I get to the mechanical stuff, uh, the black paint you're seeing here on this car is 100 pounds of black paint that takes five hours to spray, um, which is kind of crazy uh, in typical Rolls-Royce fashion. I guess we shouldn't expect anything less, but man, that is crazy. Also, there's two layers of clear coat on top of that in case uh, 100 pounds of black paint wasn't enough. Also, the wheels are now carbon fiber here on the black badge version. It's kind of funny considering, you know, carbon fiber is all about being lightweight and stuff, but um, there are 44 layers of carbon weave. So pretty crazy, you know, I guess it's just to make a statement and uh, that's why there's 44 layers of it. But man, those should be some strong wheels and very cool too. The Spirit of Ecstasy and the grill also get a special high-tech dark chrome finish to them along with other dark accents. It also gets 29 more horsepower from its twin turbo V12 for 592 horsepower total and 664 pound-feet of torque. It's paired up to a revised ZF8-speed automatic and also a quicker throttle to make the black badge version feel even a little bit 
bit more powerful than those numbers suggest. Inside it also gets unique materials, but of course it can be configured in any way you want if you pay enough. And uh, speaking of price, none was given, but of course it doesn't matter for uh, the people that buy these anyway. But I mean, they're very sweet. I mean, I actually got to review the previous generation of the Black Badge Ghost, and uh, it was very fun. I mean, driving a Rolls Royce is always an experience, but um, the Black Badge was very cool. And I, you know, if you have the money, I'd say go for it. The new Ghost seems fantastic. Um, and so anyway, they're going to be available to order now. So uh, very cool to see that. And for something more attainable, Kia this week has given us all the US details for the 2023 Sportage. So um, it's 7.1 inches longer on a 3.4 inch longer wheelbase. So you have more interior space, more cargo room than the previous generation. The interior also gets all the newest Kia tech with the dual 12.3 inch screens there for the gauges and the infotainment. And new for the Sportage here are a few uh, trims at the top of the range that are uh, new additions. So uh, beyond the SX, there's now SX. X Prestige, X Line, X Pro, and X Pro Prestige. And so those top three uh, provide more rugged looks, of course, uh, along with raised roof rails and standard all wheel drive. But all all wheel drive sportages actually get one and a half inches of extra ground clearance over the front wheel drive versions. Um, so I guess all all wheel drive ones will be able to off road a little bit better. Uh, but the X Pro models actually take the rugged thing a bit farther than most other crossovers in this segment, with giving you actual all terrain tires on smaller wheels for better off roading. Um, so that's kind of cool. And uh, mechanically, though, all Kia is saying right now is that the base engine is the newer two and a half liter nationally aspirated four cylinder that does 187 horsepower, um, which is six more than the old Sportage engine. And they also swapped out the six speed automatic for a new eight speed auto instead. Kia does say that a hybrid and another engine will be available eventually as well, but they're not giving any details on those. But if I had to guess, the hybrid setup will most likely be the same 1.6 liter turbo um, from the Tucson hybrid that I reviewed earlier this year. And that's, you know, it shares a platform with the Tucson. So that's what I would expect there. The other engine could be the two and a half liter turbo motor for maybe a GT version. That would be kind of cool. Otherwise, maybe they're talking about the plug-in hybrid version like the uh, Tucson is also getting. We'll have to see about that. But anyway, the regular Sportages will be available uh, early next year, uh, but no pricing has been revealed yet for those. GMC has also revealed the uh, 2022 Sierra 1500s this week. And so they get many of the same improvements as the 2022 Silverados, like the all new interior, thankfully, that, that finally has been brought up to date to actually compete with all the newest trucks out there. And so it's most impressive in the new Denali Ultimate trim, uh, which sits, of course, at the top of the range. And that gives you this very impressive leather and wood that both have patterns and etching inspired by Mount Denali. And it's all real stuff, by the way. There's no fake stuff here. This is all real genuine stuff and very impressive. This trim also gets Super Cruises standard along with a faux suede headliner, massaging front seats, a 12 speaker Bose stereo, and a 15 inch color head up display. And speaking of Super Cruise though, only GMC will be getting the enhanced Super Cruise system, which in enables the automatic lane changes. So 2022 Silverado also gets it, but it doesn't get the lane changes. So GMC does have a little bit of a leg up there with that, as well as of course, um, you know, the different styling, the slightly nicer interior and stuff. But the biggest improvements, thankfully, are the same ones you get in the Silverado. And thankfully those improvements are applying to all except the base model. And that is that you get a 13.4 inch widescreen touchscreen infotainment system now, along with 12.3 inch digital gauges. And the whole HVAC area has also been redesigned, of course, with that whole new interior. And I think it's a really great look. I was really impressed with it in the Silverado just from the pictures and stuff. And it looks really nice here in this as well. And if you do want, you know, a simpler truck, that base model, that's what that's for. That still uses the old interior for people who just don't care or just want something simpler. They're still giving you that option. Uh, another new trim here though is the AT4X model, uh, which builds on the AT4 by adding Multimatic DSSV shocks, electronic locking front and rear diffs, and more suspension travel. And so that essentially seems to be like the GMC version of the Silverado ZR2, although it might be a little bit less aggressive, but I don't know, it seems pretty similar to me. And uh, mechanically, as far as uh, the other upgrades go, they're the same as you get on other Silverados for 2022, which means the max towing is now 13,200 pounds, thanks to a slightly beefed up frame. And that's with the diesel engine, by the way. Also, if you go for the 2.7 liter turbo four, you now get more torque with a total of 420 pound feet, just like in the Silverado as well. Well, and so nice improvements. I mean, 420 pound feet of torque out of a four cylinder is crazy. So that's awesome. And uh, yeah, they'll be available next year. And if you want one with the new interior, they'll be start. 
those ones will be starting at $43,895 and they max out at $80,395 for the new Denali Ultimate trim. Toyota has also released pricing for the GR86 this week and announced another interesting little change that they will be changing the spelling of GR86. Previously, GR and 86 were two separate words and there was a space there, um, but now they're combining them and they say that it's just going to be one word, um, which kind of makes sense in my opinion anyway. But um, so glad to have that very minor, but just a little interesting thing I wanted to note. Otherwise, um, it's going to be starting $230 cheaper than the BRZ. Not a huge change, but I mean, they're essentially offering the same thing. So the fact that Toyota is giving any discount at all, honestly, is nice because um, yeah, it's ba you get all the same stuff as the BRZ. So it's just, if you're willing to not have the Subaru badge, you get $230 off um, or you want the slightly different tuning changes, I know. But um, anyway, so they'll be starting at $28,725, including destination. Um, and, you know, they promised that it would be well under 30 grand. And here we are, even with destination, you know, basically $1,300 under 30 grand. So that's great. Um, and like in the BRZ, if you want the automatic, it's going to be a $1,500 option. That's because they pack in all the EyeSight driver assistance tech along with the automatic. And so that's why that's more expensive. And if you want the top premium GR86, um, you know, the top trim there, it's going to be costing $31,325, again, including destination. So, I mean, basically right at 30 grand, even for that top trim, you know, before destination. And so that's, I think, a really fantastic bargain still. And especially, you know, Savage Geese, when they put it on the dyno in their video, you know, it actually sounds like they're underrating the horsepower in these things. And they're actually, you know, doing even a little bit more horsepower than um, what they're claiming there. And so... Yeah, I love it. I think it's a fantastic little car. I wholeheartedly recommend anyone that's curious to go test drive one. I think it's a huge improvement. You can go watch my GR86 review if you want to hear more. But um, yeah, uh, very exciting and uh, I'm so happy they kept it affordable as well. Bugatti this week, <laughs> switching gears to the polar opposite, Bugatti has announced that they're winding down production of the Chiron this week um, with less than 40 build slots left for pure sport and super sport models and then they're done. And um, so the regular Chiron has already ended production and um, I guess, you know, that, that just quietly happened. They didn't announce it. They just, someone had the last build slot for those a while back and they got built. Um, but as for what's next, uh, you know, Bugatti is now controlled by Rimac and, um, it won't be going electric, even though Rimac is all about, you know, electric stuff, obviously. Um, so Mate Rimac earlier this year, and I talked about this in the past weekly update, um, he said that for the next car after the Chiron, um, we will not just recycle what we have, not just restyle the Chiron or hybridize the Chiron. We're developing a completely new product from the ground up everything because we think that's the best way to go. That product will have an internal combustion engine. So we're safe there. It'll still be kind of, you know, madness and be crazy, whatever they end up doing. But, you know, Bugatti, you know, that's something that does take some time. So I don't expect a new, you know, successor here in a year or two. You know, maybe in several years, we'll see a new engineering masterpiece with whatever Rimac comes up with here for the new Bugatti. But uh, in the meantime, I mean, the Chiron, wow, what a car. It's all, it's still just like a fantastic, amazing thing that, you know, doesn't even feel like it's dated, but, um, you know, it's cool. They're sticking to their production limits and uh, it's winding down, but sad to see the Chiron go. Lastly, a car that you'll be seeing a lot more of that will definitely not be ending production anytime soon is the Tesla Model 3. So Hertz this week has revealed that they have placed an order for over for 100,000 Model 3s. It could be even more, I read somewhere, but at least 100,000 Model 3s um, that they'll be adding to their rental fleet here and they'll be arriving over the next 14 months. They'll be adding them in little by little. Um, so, I mean, that's a lot of Model 3s. I mean, it's a huge, um, you know, thing for Tesla, of course, and it's going to be very cool that, you know, they're electrifying their fleet. Uh, but I'll be kind of curious to see how this plays out for Hertz because, you know, a lot of people rent rental cars because they need to do long trips or it's, you know, business people or people who, you know, just need a rental car because their cars in the shop or something like that. And obviously they're, it's not like the entire fleet's going to be electric, but still, you know, if they're like, all we have left is a Tesla. And then these people who've never encountered an electric car before have to figure out how to charge, how to deal with range limitations. I mean, there's a decent learning curve with electric vehicles. And, you know, if you're just doing around town city stuff, you know, not a big deal. Um, but you know, for anyone who burns through more than one tank of gas in a rental car, you're going to have to figure all this stuff out with the Teslas. 
Um, it'll really be kind of a trial by fire thing, I think, for Hertz, and we'll see what happens here um, and uh, see how customers react to that. But very, very interesting, and if nothing else, should certainly help electric vehicles go a little more mainstream if more and more people are forced to be exposed to them and deal with this and figure this stuff out. Uh, we'll see you know, if there's pushback or not. But anyway, very interesting to see that. But that's it for all the news this week, guys. So let me know your thoughts on all the stuff in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a safe and happy Halloween. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.